the other game in Division 1, Group A, Wexford had a 2.23 to 1.15 win over Westmead. Um, they had a lot of wides again, but Dar Egan was more heartened that they had chances rather than wides. He just said, we'd be in a much worse place if we had 30 to 35 shots in goal. We had nearly 50 today. We had 21 shots against Galway in the first 25 minutes. So we're owning the ball. Someday they're going to go over and we're going to absolutely blitz someone. And just from Joe Fortune's point of view, he's just talking about how Division 1 is tough going. He said, I'm not going to lie to you. I left Ennis dispirited. That's after their, was it, 427 to seven, or 14 points lost the week before. In myself, in the group, about how hard it is to try and bring that next generation of players through. For teams like ourselves and some of the other teams uh, trying to fight to stay in Division 1, it is very hard when you lose that calibre of players. So he's talking about a casualty list, which includes Niall Mitchell, Angus Clark and Cormac Boyle, and I believe veteran Derek McNicholas, who has also stepped away. I think he's the longest sir he was the longest um servant inter-county hurler in the game so talks of him stepping away whether it's for a year or for retirement but it is it's cutthroat in division one isn't it and for Westmead it's they're in that difficult spot they're in the spot that they were in in 2020 the spot that awfully were in last year where you're going to be on the receiving end of a few shellackings kind of there's no point in saying any different you're in against you're in the harder of the two groups as well you are, and the other thing is, it's just a numbers game uh, goes out here. I mean, I'm trying to think, I don't know, how many senior hurling clubs is it in Westmead? Is it kind of six to seven in that pocket? Kind Itch, of yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's the issue. Once you get a couple of injuries, how much you can absorb them? I mean, you know, we're talking about Shefflin able to ease the St. Thomas guys back into it. Okay, till Kenny lose, uh, you know, but Lane doesn't have the Bally Hale guys, but like, you know, he has enough kind of young guys coming up. You mentioned Horgan and Callan pulling out for Cork. Uh, the length of the kind of absentee list for Westmead is just too extreme for them to be able to kind of absorb, you know, and it's just sustaining a performance so that like it's what was it 11, 10 and a half line yesterday um, and they're not able to kind of to kind of keep it going. Um, I would say two things, Wexford probably had a bit of a cause here, the memories of the draw last summer um, in terms of kind of the way that worked, it was about, you know, let's not make, let it repeat that lads, let's, you know, let's not squander a winning position here, let's, you know, see it out to the line. And also the way their scoring just absolutely fell off a cliff in the second half uh, against yeah. Galway last week after probably a good first half. And I would have, I'd say they would have been very disappointed with that because that was obviously a big occasion for them. Uh, the first league game under lights, big home expecting crowd after the kind of the excitement of that Walsh Cup game against Kilkenny. People would have been happy with the first half. And then, you know, I'm just watching on TV, like it was just one-way traffic in the second half when, uh, when Galway kind of took over, you know. So the fact that they got a little bit better... <laughs> Here, um, you know, the goals from Banville and McDonald. I'm interested looking at it that like Banville comes on at half time, scores three points from freeze. Uh, Chin had scored uh, four points free. So, so obviously, Chin free taker in the first half, Banville in the second half. But is there any, there's no other county, I think, that has this issue no. that they need to kind of get a handle on it as much, you know, and you saw elements of it last week against Galway. Um, and it just feels that that is tied into the it's just an extra little bit of score and inspiration is the thing they're going to need. Now, I know, Egan, it's a good point, in fairness. If you're creating that volume of chances, that is heartening. And at least you can just work on the conversion ratio, whereas it's harder if you're not creating them at all. It's like, you know, how are we going to have to manipulate space and attack and, like, what's wrong with our running angles and all this sort of thing. There's other, I think there's more elements to it if you're not creating kind of as many chances, you know. But there is, I think you'd be glad with the results. I think you'd be glad that the second half was a better increase in tempo than last week. Um but, you know, no more than any other county, there's still a couple of uh, things there to work on, you know? There's, it's one thing creating all the chances, but some of them are probably forced and some of them probably aren't, you know, realistic high percentage shots. And it's grand saying, you know, we created whatever, but if four or five of those are, you know, speculative efforts from the middle of the park out around the sidelines, you know. I, <laughs> well, it, it, it would be interesting, and I'm sure they do it, like to drill it down and see what's the actual breakdown, like as in how yeah. many are like you say, pot shots from your half-back line in midfield and how many then are maybe, I don't know, shots inside the 45 or 50-yard line from your forward line that are missed, like, you know? Yeah, yeah. That, 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 that is a good point, Because, right? I mean, like, there, yeah. there, there are times, like, a cornerback could, like, land a ball from his own 45 <laughs> and, you know, sometimes that technically is down as a wide, like, you know, and you're looking at it going, well, you know, or, or a, long, a long delivery that, uh, that evades a corner forward and goes wide as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The worst, the worst kind. 